Hello, remarkable humans. I'd like to speak about the language and the terminology that we use when we refer to that particular class of fascinating substances that radically alter our awareness. Now, in both the popular press and discourse and also within scientific literature, these days people tend to use the word psychedelic. You'll find within older medical texts, sometimes within uh, older texts about psychedelic substances themselves, uh, the term hallucinogen being used. And occasionally you'll come across that these days, usually being used by people who are less familiar with the current scientific research into the matter, or sometimes people who've got a bit of a pejorative kind of uh, edge to their use of the term with the suggestion that what people experience on psychedelics and what they see is not real. Now, aside of the philosophical and uh, psychological issues that we might bring up about what is or is not real, the problem with hallucinogens, it really doesn't describe very successfully what these drugs are actually capable of doing. So hallucinogen firstly suggests that you're seeing things that are not there. And this is more common with uh, delirium substances, things that induce the kind of experiences that people get when they have a high fever. So that's things like deadly nightshade and things like mandrake, other substances which uh, you have to be really quite careful uh, to, to if you're going to use in an intelligent and safe way. If you're going to use psychedelics, what you need to understand is that although they may have a powerful visionary component, describing them as hallucinogens kind of misses the point because the vision is not necessarily the important bit of the experience. If you look at the way that mescaline came into culture, for example, in the 19th and early 20th century, you can see that when these drugs were uh, absorbed by Western science in its most recent iteration, it was indeed the visionary aspect of them, the fact that they could create strange pictures, particularly with the eyes closed, that was seen as their primary action. But if you read something like uh, Mescaline, A Global History of the First Psychedelic by Mike J, you'll see that although in the West this obsession with vision uh, exists, Within some of the indigenous cultures that use substances such as peyote, which contains mescaline, the visionary aspect of the experience was seen as quite kind of secondary to its primary action. So what exactly do these things do? If they're not about visionary material necessarily, why are they psychedelic? Well, they're psychedelic because they're mind manifesting. That is to say, they make our awareness aware of itself in a radically different way. These substances work primarily on the serotonin system of the brain. So they work on uh, a system which it creates a phenomenologically persistent framework within this, which this new form of awareness arises. And this new form of awareness has a lot of similarities as can be shown with fMRI scans. Then with the states of awareness we have as pre-verbal children, the states of awareness that we have in meditation and the states of awareness that we can reach by other non-drug forms of uh, trance induction, what chaos magicians sometimes call gnosis. So things like breathwork, things like dance, drumming, protracted periods of darkness and so on. All of these things will create mind states that are very similar to the ones we see induced chemically using psychedelic drugs. So what the psychedelics do within this phenomenologically persistent framework of the changes in the serotonin system is they create novel connections between previously isolated or discrete regions of the brain. That's part of the reason we might get visual material arising because we have this kind of cross wiring between systems in the brain that normally handle vision and perhaps other systems that normally handle auditory material. So with eyes closed we might have fractal forms arising in response to sound in our uh, in our, in, inside our minds. But it's the connection between the discrete brain regions in this persistent framework that really matters, because that's where psychedelics come into their own as mind manifesting substances. Essentially what they do is they allow us to problem solve. That is to say that bits of us, our brains, our psyches that are not connected, connect, and that can lead to massively important insights into resolutions of previously insoluble problems. So there's been research looking at can psychedelics help people with very pragmatic, what I kind of call equal sign problems. So problems in mathematics, engineering, uh, uh, science and allied disciplines. And the short answer is yes, uh, the appropriately controlled, curated 
and right, the right kind of dose of a psychedelic can indeed help those people find real-world results for their problems. Certainly we know that we can uh, feed problems into this mind state and come out with novel, successful and advantageous answers. The most obvious domain for this is the domain of healing. So when people have psychological difficulties that they're trying to address, uh, one of the problems that they often find is that they need a new perspective to see things from. And psychedelics allow our own minds to have that. In fact, it may be that this persistent state which can be induced by these substances is actually designed as part of the healing repertoire of the brain. This is the kind of psychological equivalent of what happens with the clotting factors in the blood and the process of scarring and repair within the body. So the psychedelic state allows us to problem solve, it allows us to find new ways of understanding relationships within ourselves, within our communities, and perhaps even globally with the rest of the ecology uh, that we inhabit, uh, that we share on this planet. The obvious domain in which these things have been successful in uh, recent research has been to address entrenched psychological difficulties such as post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety and depression, which are some of the most significant and far-reaching health problems that we have on our planet today. So psychedelic substances, what I would describe as psychedelic transformation, psychedelic magic, definitely allows us to have real-world successful results, which we can demonstrate scientifically, and we can demonstrate empirically, and we can demonstrate through individual case histories. These things really do what they uh, uh, claim to do. Now the psychedelic state may not be advantageous for everyone under every circumstance and I certainly wouldn't necessarily suggest that it's uh, essential for anyone to pursue an engagement with this. But certainly as magicians I think that it's important for us to understand these things quite fully. You see there is a really good evidence and a lot more of this is emerging from researchers that the western magical tradition has an important aspect of it in terms of its uh, psychedelic, its mind manifesting uh, use of various consciousness changing agents. And we also know that within those cultures that have got a significant tradition of using these things, areas that we would normally consider in the West parapsychological or simply magical can be deployed from these altered states of awareness because they give us a visceral experience of how everything in the universe is interconnected. And as a magician, it's pretty much axiomatic that that state is a state of great interest for somebody who believes that that interconnection might allow the possibility of action, transformation, change and results. So I think we pretty much need to abandon the old fashioned use of terms like hallucinogen and really embrace and understand the value of psychedelics, not simply as visionary materials, even in those states such as NNDMT or ayahuasca, which are highly visual, but it's this idea that we're able to create a hyper-connected, stable mind state, which we can operate within, and within a system and a situation in which that state is curated well, held well, and directed well, these can definitely lead to real-world magical results. Thank you for listening.